Hello, I'm here to tell you about my building work. I had C&M Builders of Nottingham called Chris and he had Mark with him, not his son who's gone to Australia. They also have on their website that they that these things, attention to detail and a quality friendly service is our main concern. Clear customer communication is key. It is important to us that completing a project is on time and in budget. So those things are on their website, C and M Building Nottingham. I'll take you to the front where they will start at the front of the house for logic really. The aim of the building was to make my house accessible to me in my wheelchair. So I needed a ramp from the front. Um, here's my drive and it's got some new patterns put on it, a bit of artwork. I wasn't actually communicated with clearly about those but they were put there and um, also among the artwork I was given some 3D sculptures which I may not be able to bend and show you very well. Uh, don't worry if I yell a bit with pain, it's just part of me. There we go, some 3D sculptures you must keep your toe clear of them. And here's the ramp. Uh, well, do you see the ramp? Neither do I. Uh, so in we go. And they took away, you can see the difference in the flooring, the porch, the wall between the porch and the main house to give me a wider place to put my big wheelchair here. Oh, look, there's some... Um, paper towels for the kitchen. Builders love paper towels. I think they play with them. Um, if you need some for yourself you'd better take them up to bed because they'll find them wherever else you put them. Uh, in the garage, oh by the way I needed access to put the wheelchair in here was my best bet. That's one of my little buggy things which actually hurt my back. Um, but this step down's awkward and the turn to get out the door from this door is quite tight. Going back to the garage, I've been given a pillar on the far wall, but it doesn't actually reach the ceiling, so I'm not quite sure why I got it. Maybe it's artwork. Um, I did pay for two extra steels or RSJs and I saw two, one shorter one and one longer one, but um, I only saw one being fitted and that was in the hall. Up here on the other side of the ceiling of the garage is one of their best features. Have I got it in the film? There you go. They're good at those. That's a feature they'll give you. They won't discuss it. So now I cannot put this film onto pause. I've practised and practised and it won't work. So if as I walk you get dizzy, shut your eyes and I'll tell you when it's time to open them. Because I'm just walking a little way into my house. And you can open them. Open your eyes now, because we're looking up at the ceiling, which is above where there was a built-in cupboard, which was part of their brief to take down. And here's where they put right the ceiling above. Okay, so that's the final plaster because they stopped work on the 5th of April. Very abruptly, they told me in the, the young man, Mark, came into where I was hiding away trying to get some peace and told me in the middle of the morning we'd be finished today to my amazement, to my horror actually, there's the floor where the cupboard was, and that's how it's kind of been finished off. Now, I'm going to walk through, so if you want to close your eyes a minute, for the sake of dizziness, this is my indoor wheelchair, which swivels on a sixpence, as it were. Um, and I need that, because walking about and leaning and stuff really hurts so much. Um, I'm just going now to the back part of the house, which was the main work having a small extension to make the kitchen big enough for me to turn around in a wheelchair and 
um, making it sort of accessible with a wheelchair. Now here we go. I'll take you into what is the dining room part of the house to show you where they built the partition wall between the front and the back end of the what was a through room and to the bottom of the partition wall and if you can spot what's missing yep and on the other side it's the same but the dogs are in there so I won't disturb them I'm moving again in case it makes you dizzy just coming back there's a lot of junk everywhere I haven't been able to use the cupboards and I'm trying to sort things out as well now here we have the wall behind the hob. My old cooker was roughly here, just a bit further along. And behind my old cooker were tiles my daughter had put up and they were special. Now here is the plastering that they did over where the old tiles were. Okay, come along a bit. Some of it has features, um, like here. Now, because there was a sort of strange way of doing the um, the budget. Uh, I did actually end up overspending an awful lot and I'm now in a lot of debt. So the finish that I've got to do here cannot be nice tiling. I'll have to just paint it. Now up here is another one of their special features at the top of their you see all the plastering as we go up where they took things off and left them there's another one of their special features and then the wall goes round and into the corner and this is their finished attention to detail okay right and it comes down to the top of my fridge which they rattled about moving and I found on top of the fridge, when I filmed it as a practice run, a few things I didn't know I had. Okay, now I'm coming down to the floor. Sorry, there's a bit of rubbish on the floor which the dog's got hold of. I'll move it when I get there. I'll just show you how the cupboard fits up to the, up to the fridge. And then we get my tiles Oh, by the way, I have washed them. The marks and the sort of white bits don't come off. Now, here are the tiles, which they claim they didn't take off. They claim they were like this because this is where they go under the cupboards that were there. We're now coming here. I'm just turning it round slightly. That is what the dog stole. I'll just pick it up. Oh, oh. This is the edge with the join to the new build. That edge, which may not show on this film, is just over an inch high, in fact one and a half inches in some places. Very bad if you put your toe against it. And very sharp actually. And here's the other side. You can see the tiles go up to it here. And then here's where they're quite newly chipped at and chipped at and gnawed at and here and they come off and it goes on round here oh and there's a dog's bowl of water there <laughs> now this is the new build bit I'm sorry it jerks because I'm I live alone I'm a widow and I am of course disabled so I'm not that steady um, here's the floor sorry about the dog hairs on I didn't know they were there and uh, that's the self-leveling finish they gave. His name's Chris Tootin, by the way. Chris Tootin is very proud of his self-leveling finish. He kept talking about it such a lot. I had to keep telling him how careful I was with the dogs not to go on it. And uh, his self-leveling finish is some sort of work of art. Um, and it, it comes up to the edge like that. I mustn't go on too long. Now here we have the skirting board. Here's the skirting board this side by the fridge side. 
and then it comes around the corner okay and then we have it meeting the skirting board as it meets the angle and if you think you've never seen skirting board like that you may well be right but you have seen boards like if I look out of the window I've got the lights on in here I don't know what it will do to the film outside the window you can see the overhang of the roof which I asked for to have a little verandary bit and there are the I've forgotten what they're called now <laughs> the bits you get you know under the guttering bit <laughs> those boards <laughs> face show or something anyway that's not skirting board it's facial or soffit board or something. Just here in this corner is a very creative way of building. In this corner, I've got a, plum, a, a put in cupboardy thing, which fortunately I had my, had the, um, it wasn't the plumber, it, it was the electrician. I had him come and do an extra job for me that wasn't part of the build and I employed him on my own. And he'd been employed by Chris to do some of the stuff to do with the build. And he then started taking that off. And I said, hey, what's going on? He said, oh, no, your stopcock's in there. And I didn't know that. Because my stopcock used to be behind here. Sorry about the things on the working surface. As I said, I can't use the cupboard yet. But you can see that wall there with the plug on it. There were cupboards beneath that where the dishwasher is. And inside those cupboards was my stop was the stop cup. Now going back to this wall, you can see tiles have been taken off on the side and up to here. They've put on a new um, socket, but it's actually in the place where the old one was in the same size. I have absolutely no idea why all the tiles were taken off. None whatsoever. No, no, just can't fathom it. They were special tiles because my daughter gave them to me for, for my birthday and some of them were hand painted. So they were quite special, but the fact my daughter put them up and gave them to me was really special. Going back along here, this is where the new build meets the old wall and the new plastering gives up because it's met the old wall. Now. The job was to make all the kitchen okay. So this is the finish, attention to detail and finish that you get. Okay, so we'll carry on. And while I'm talking about this end, and we were talking about the floor earlier, I'll show you what the self-leveling floor has got hundreds of little craters they call them pinholes these are quite big bubble holes with little crater edges and so far I've only been able to look up the reason why you get them and not how to get rid of them and there they all are over there I'll stand still as I can to get them in view um, I wrote it all down but I can't remember what it all said but basically the reasons are to do with uh, the, um, the surface you put them on being of poor quality, being poor concrete, too porous and too sandy, which rings true, and perhaps being damp. It being put down wrongly with no attention to the, what they say you should do, like wearing spiked shoes and putting it down with a spiked roller. And the third reason, not making it up properly and perhaps mixing it with solvent to make it go further. And you mustn't do that because too much solvent will bubble up. You'll see things on the floor which are me buying things to try and get things together to make things right. But I don't have enough money to do it. Now here is the end of the work surface with its join. The work surface was bought far longer than was needed and could reach all the way along. 
but somehow or other suddenly was needed this extra 300 millimeter cupboard and that was told me in a strange way every time something happened to the design that had to be changed just walking around showing you bits of wall uh, Chris would come and tell me your idea about this is not going to work so whatever they were going to do wasn't going to work but it was always their idea or not theirs but his I'd never actually said I'd always gone along with what they said because you'll very quickly find he he knows best <laughs> He's always got the right answer. And he told me, you'll have to have another cupboard at the end here, or it's going to look odd. Um, and he said, I can get it for you because I give you my trade discount. I've come back here to get my book because I want to get this straight. The trade discount is um, quite interesting because he'll tell you from the start that he'll give you a trade discount on everything. I'll tell you what, I'll come back to that in a minute. I'll just show you here where the old building and the new building meet. And this is my dining room, which I can't afford to refloor. Now, the marks on the floor, and it's quite a sturdy, tough floor actually, won't wash off. You can see I've even left the cloth and tried some more stuff to squirt on it. I had a big bucket of water in here at one stage. Um, they don't come off because they're concrete and I've kept this because although it's now the 23rd of April St George's Day I actually kept that to show you that's what was on the working surfaces in the kitchen every night when I came in to make my meal and by the way they're quite happy to use your cooker and take your things and your washing up liquid and things like that and this is what was on working surfaces every night um, they also like to share your cooking pots, so I kept it to show you, because this is actually an old Tupperware pot, and I'm an old lady, and it's so useful, I used it loads of times, and when I said who's taken the cookerware, the, the, I call it a chicken pot because it fits over a chicken, I was treated quite rudely, and then he said, I didn't have anything to mix up my paste or something. As though that was my fault. I had also got my, um, uh, oh dear, printer out here. This is, by the way, my dining chair, which was in perfect condition. Um, I'd had my printer out here, but I've had to throw that away. As I've had to throw away a radio, an expensive special lamp and a few other things. I left the liquid, fairy liquid, down here. I'll try and reach it now because um, it's quite a funny story. Oh, by the way, the books and A4 pads are down there too because I didn't put them there. I bought loads of these dust cloths for them and ones that were lined with plastic, but they didn't stay where I put them. So here's the second fairy liquid bottle because they must have taken another one, I think, because um, I'd started a new bottle and I couldn't find it anywhere. And lo and behold, I, I just couldn't find it because I didn't see it there. So I came to them and said, have you seen the fairy, li uh, not the fairy, have you seen the washing up liquid? And the younger guy said, oh, oh yeah, I, I took it because um, I needed it to um, mix with plaster. And then do you know what he said? He said, if you come, if you go into your garage, you'll find there's a um, filing cabinet in there. And in one of the drawers, there's lots and lots of bottles of washing up liquid. Now, it was like he was telling me I didn't know that my filing cabinet was in there. And like I didn't know, I'd been putting in there things I bought when it was buy one, get one free. I just couldn't believe it. And also, he seemed to know there were lots in there. Now, when I couldn't find the washing up liquid, I'd gone in there to look and there was none there. There were just some bottles of the stuff you use in the dishwasher. Rinse aid. Similarly, after they'd gone, if we just pan across to the open cupboard under the sink, 
there's no um, shelf under that cupboard but they've put in the little screw things that came with it to, to lean the shelf on. That shelf's gone missing and the uh, pine shelf you see standing up is one of four and I had three ready to They'd said it was part of my job that I'd given them to put up in a place I'd got for them. And those three have disappeared. They do a sort of hide-and-seek game. But the game of hide-and-seek doesn't always work as well as it has with the fairy liquid. You don't always find it. You, in fact, don't find things usually. I mean, two very expensive um, tape measures, builder-type tape measures that were mine, I just can't find anywhere. And then, this is gonna look really petty, but on the floor I've just dropped a tea towel, which I was using in the kitchen, it was in good condition. And the next thing I found, it was outdoors, and it's absolutely ruined because it's stuck with glue. But the thing about that tea towel is, my mother gave it to me, with two others made in to look like a little doll, and it was the last thing she gave me because she had Alzheimer's and she bought it in a Christmas bazaar. And so it's kind of special. And they just took it outside and mixed it up with concrete. So here's um, coming out of the bit. And here's the ramp going down. Um, here's some of the mixed up stuff. Oh, by the way, the handle on the brush has just disappeared. And you can tell that the brush is quite new. Um, you can sort of see that my watering cans aren't kind of in very good condition. And I'll just show you because I I moved it to put in shop. That's my wheelbarrow. It's gone a bit out of, you can't see it in the light. It's covered in concrete. My, my gardener tried to get some off. I'll try and walk down the ramp. The ramp is 50 inches long. I'm keeping it in inches because it's easier to do the maths. And the height, excuse me about the light and everything, is 16 and a half inches high. And I probably can't demonstrate this very well. No, I can't because like my back hurts. The bottom bits don't seem to be attached to anything. You can move them about. So that's the ramp. And a wheelchair ramp legally has to be 1 in 12. Now if you do that one, it's easy to do because if you do it in half inches, 16 and a half, 33, 50, 100, that's three in, three in one. It's a three in one drop, that's dangerous. Oh, and this, they very kindly left me a present when they went. That little um, sorcery thing for big flower pots was absolutely full to the brim and had rainwater in as well with cigarette ends. It was so full, I honestly do believe there might have been a thousand in there. It was just every cigarette you could believe had gone in there. And there were loads more around the garden, actually, and lots of rubbish. My garden's been moving my flower pots for me so I can perhaps put flowers in them now. I'm gonna have to stop, because I'm in some pain. Um, there's still cigarette ends, and I really hate that. I mean, people who smoke can smoke in my garden, but they never leave the ends of people, family members, uh, friends, you know, who smoke. They're always very civilised. Anyway, going back to things like this door, I'll quickly tell you about Creative with Money. Um, very soon, I was paying him money through the bank for what he'd said he needed. And I got to a stage where I'd paid for the build and overpaid for it. So I took what I'd overpaid off what he'd said he'd charge me to put the kitchen in. And I told him that and showed him the reckoning and had it all written down carefully. And then we found that, because it wasn't unpacked straight away, the kitchen sink, which I'd ordered and paid for, hadn't got the drain thing um, for this sink drain bit, you know, that catches the bits, and hadn't got the um, overflow uh, sort of pipey bit, hadn't got that with it. 
And he said, I'll have to get that for the plumber. So I said, well, I've only got two £20 notes. So I gave him those because I didn't know if it would be over 20 Then one, Then soon after that, he said to me, bring, you'll need some money when the plumber comes to pay him for those bits for the sink. So I said, but I gave it to you. And he said, oh, no, that was for that end cupboard. <clears throat> well, he wasn't worth arguing with. And so I left it as being for that end cupboard. Now, just remember that he gives you his trade discount. So as it happened, I'd been buying the cupboard doors and everything from the same place, B&Q. So I looked online to see how much the cupboard had cost. And it cost £21. So he got £19 change. <laughs> now, the cupboards above... He also made me buy, I bought the doors, I bought all the doors on the cupboards and of course the handles. And I bought all the bottom cupboards. And I also ended up paying twice for the drawer boxes. Um, he kept telling me he'd give me his trade discount for them all. And uh, I can't find it. Um, Anyway, yeah, um, I, I got all the maths written down and there are places where uh, I, I've got, I paid him a good £150 for the units and online I found that they came to £92. Um, so there were, with his trade discount it had cost me £58 more than if I'd bought them online. That's one example. So trade discounts are quite expensive. Um, there are lots and lots of things. There's another little thing. He catches whatever you've got. Now, I'm having it all done because I'm disabled. And at one point, I had to go into hospital because my sciatic nerve went. And, you know, it's awfully painful. And I actually said to him at one point, it's actually more painful than childbirth because I've had three babies and I didn't get any painkilling stuff in time. And uh, a bit later on, he suddenly had sciatic nerve trouble and he came to me and said, you know, they've told me it's more painful than childbirth. And I thought, oh God, he'd forgotten that I told you that, you know. And when he first came, I caught an ear infection and a throat infection, that sort of stuff. And it actually made me really ill, and I get migraines. And I'd had to say to him, I'm really sorry, but I've got to go and lie down. I'm sorry, if you need me, I'm not around, I'm sorry. Sure enough, within about half a day, Chris had got a really bad ear problem, and then he kept turning up and saying, oh, my wife had to take me to casualty with my ear, you know. So he does have a really weak health situation, and if you've got anything wrong with you or anything, or any health matter... Try to keep it from him because he catches it from you. And heaven forbid if you're pregnant, that would be awful. Anyway, going back to the situation I'm in, I'm now trying to get sorted out and I'm in terrible debt. So if anybody can help me, this is the um, floor that I need to get into working order. Because until I can use the floor, I can't get on in life. And until I can sort out those big, big holes over there and make it level, I'm stuck. And I've got no money, I've got terrible debts. If anyone can help, and if you've listened to the end of this half hour, God bless you. You're a stalwart, and thank you so much. C and M Building, Nottingham, Bilborough, Nottingham. Chris Tootin, that's the guy. Thank you.